Hey guys, it's Bookish Vegan here, or Natalia, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. So I'm not sure what I'm going to be reading this week. Hopefully, I might finish Kill the Queen, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to listen to that because on Friday, it is my EU law exam. And I kind of realised why I'm feeling kind of unmotivated for this next exam. And I found out this morning, I'm very, very ill. I started getting ill around like the evening time yesterday when I was finishing off my revision and this morning literally I woke up with snot dripping out my nose. I know TMI but I love oversharing with you guys. So as you saw from the previous clip I did my Viking oracles which I've been doing for like the past I feel like two months every week at the beginning of the week. I love this. This is my favourite oracle deck I own. I own three in total with this one and then one tarot deck that I use for special occasions. I missed Beltane because I always do it for the equinoxes or the sabbats and like my birthdays and like Christmas so that's the sabbat as well but yeah I'm gonna do my tarot this month for my birthday so no harm in that but it was so cool. I started like shuffling my cards and then I would always pick the first one off the deck when I felt like it was time to stop shuffling but recently I've been laying out all my cards after I shuffle them after I feel like they, they're shuffling enough and I pick a card that stands out to me and I really like doing that I've seen loads of people do that some people just shuffle and then pick off the top but I really enjoyed that and look who I got I got flipping Loki my favorite Norse god look at that these cards are just stunning but yeah I read what it said in the book so it's card number 13 so develop your gift of oration and clear speech play more often laughter is a god's given gift there may be someone in your life that isn't what they seem try a more light-hearted approach thin fur scale skin flight fight song sin all are available to me I shift my shape in your mind. I trick my way into your play. So I like what it says here. So it says Loki is part of that class of gods known as tricksters. Although tricksters taught life lessons by tricking, shape-shifting, playing, the fool or simply playing, they are not evil. By humbling the righteous and mighty and exposing the unjust, they simply rebalance what they saw as out of balance. I definitely agree. Loki was a well-equipped trickster. As a shapeshifter, he had few rivals. He was believed to have been able to change into a seal, a woman, a fish, a horse, and even a housefly. His children were as varied as Fenrir the wolf and Hel the giantess. Loki played the trickster superbly and is featured in many stories in the mythology of the Norse. One mythos that displays Loki's talents is the story of the theft of Thor's magical hammer, Mjolnir. Thor awoke one morning to find his hammer missing. Little did he know that King Primer of the Jotnar giants had stolen it to blackmail the gods into granting him the hand of the beautiful goddess Freya. Loki flew around until he came upon Primer, who engaged him in conversation. Loki acted innocent and soon ascertained that the hammer was buried underground and relayed Primer's ultimatum to Thor. Thor and Loki then visited Freya and asked whether she would marry Primer. They got quite the mouthful from her in response. So the gods of Asgard gathered to discuss an alternative strategy. Finally, they decided to cover the burly Thor in a bridal veil and present him to Premier as Freya. They hoped that during the wedding proceedings, Thor would get close enough to his hammer to grab it. And so Freya the bride was presented to Premier, who happily invited them all to a wedding feast. Thor the big warrior began to shovel food through his veil at a great rate, prompting Premier to question Freya's massive appetite. Trickster Loki answered, saying Freya has starved herself in her eagerness for the coming nuptials. Unable to control his lust, Premier peeked behind the veil, only to be met by a set of fiery eyes. Definitely not fit for a maiden, Premier questioned Loki about Freya's eyes, and Loki responded that her eyes were red because she hadn't slept for eight nights due to her excitement in meeting him. Finally, when it was time for the ceremony, the Jotnar brought out Mjolnir and laid it on Freya's lap to sanctify her prior to the marriage vows. Thor then had his chance and grabbed his hammer and threw off his veil, revealing his true form. Premier was defeated, as were all his people. It is wise at this time to take a leaf out of Loki's book and find a way to laugh at her troubles. There is almost always humour in any situation, and it is a great talent to find it. 
Should Loki call you, look at the lighter side of the situation. There is one, or at least there is a smarter, brighter alternative. I feel like always my oracle cards, especially my Viking ones, because I'm so like connected to the Vikings. So I always feel like whatever card I pull fits my situation perfectly so i have to take loki's advice and find the fun and laughter in every situation even if it's stressful <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna put that in front of me so loki brings me happiness and joy because anytime i think about what happened in avengers to him i get super sad <laughs> and so it does like pretty much all my friends but yeah it's 9 26 on monday if you heard like noise behind me it's my laptop it's like on the side of my bed it's exporting my last week vlog but I really wanted to film my book review of Marriage for One but I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow maybe my cold will pass because I'm never ill for that long but I watched the new episode of Game of Thrones episode 4 and it was okay like I saw so many people complaining about what's happening to Danny, but I'm so glad the directors of the show finally took that approach like I'm so scared to talk about Game of Thrones in my vlogs even though you see them a week after the episode is released but it's still really scary because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone but I definitely teared up at the beginning because Sansa and Arya are my flipping favorites I love the Starks always behind the Starks and then like at the end I did not think that was gonna happen but it happened oh my god but ugh, something also happened in the episode and my poor torment Dorian's Bane Fucking hell, my, sorry for swearing, my heart broke for him. <laughs> And I'm not happy with what happened with that. And then poor Gendry. Like I feel bad for him even though I didn't want that to happen. So I'm really enjoying Game of Thrones but it wasn't my favourite episode. I think this episode is my least favourite out of the four. Then it's the second one. Then it's I think the third one. And then I think so far I've really enjoyed the first one. But yeah, hopefully I'm going to go and do some revision. guys it is Tuesday today I already filmed a video did one hour of revision I'm planning on doing like another hour to two I'm still not feeling the best I'm pretty sure I told you guys yesterday that I got ill I don't know how I filmed that video <laughs> even though like in the video the top that I'm wearing it's fresh from the washing machine but there's a little like slight shadow of a stain I had on there from homemade perfume so that's just great but if you didn't know May is very big on releases this year on new book releases so my first package of new releases came so it's two books one is of a series I absolutely adore and it's kind of like a novella bind up and then the second one is a new sci-fi release so let's open it up I didn't realize I ordered two. Oh my god, this is so like not looking very nice. But the first one is no, actually looks nice. I don't know, like when I was like looking up close, it looked weird, but I think that's how it's supposed to be. But I got it's such a stunning book. Alvaro Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jake Kristoff. I absolutely love the Illuminae Files. Such a good series. I look I think Amy Kaufman is just one of my favourite authors ever. I loved her co-written trilogy, the first book being These Broken Stars, so it's the Starbound trilogy. I still have yet to read Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, that's his solo work, but when I saw that they were releasing a new sci-fi, so this is number one in Aurora Cycle, so this series is going to be called that. I just had to read it. I'm not even sure what it's about. Let's see. So it says, the year is 2318 and the graduating cadets of Aurora Academy are being assigned their first missions. Star pupil Tyler Jones is ready to recruit the squad of his dreams, but his own boneheaded heroism sees him stuck with the dregs and nobody else in the academy would touch. A cocky diplomat with a black belt in sarcasm, oh my god I love that, a sociopath scientist with a fondness for shooting her bunkmate. 
pants. Love that. A smart Aztec whiz with the galaxy's biggest chip on his shoulder. An alien warrior with anger management issues. A tomboy pilot who's totally into her squad leader. In case you were wondering. So I'm not surprised that someone said it's kind of similar to Six of Crows. It kind of gives me Guardians of the Galaxy crossover with Six of Crows. If you didn't know, Guardians of the Galaxy, the first movie, volume one, is one of my favourites in the Avenger universe. I was blown away by how much I enjoyed that movie so much. So I'm so excited to get to this. And I get the Six of Crows references because Tomboy Pilot, who's totally not into a squad leader, that reminds me of In Edge, an alien warrior with anger management issues, that's kind of mafias. A smart ass tech whiz with the galaxy's biggest chip on his shoulder, that's Wylan, isn't it? A sociopath scientist with a fondness for shooting his bonk bait. <laughs> Jesper, a cocky diplomat with a black belt in sarcasm. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just so excited to read this. Might do a review on it because I've been really enjoying them. Oh, what's this? Oh my god, and it has kind of like some pages layouts similar to um what am I trying to say? Illuminate. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my brain's still dead. But yeah, I'm super excited to add this to my collection. Oh, it's stunning. <laughs> and then the second book is also purpley. And it is A Broken Throne, which is a Red Queen collection by Victoria Aveyard. So this is kind of a short story collection. So it has the first two story collections that have been released. I don't have the bind up anymore. I had a paperback one. But I really wanted this because it has maps inside. It has just different stuff that I I think Victoria Aveyard has collected. She even has a timeline of everything that happened. Oh my god, Uncle Julian has written some stuff and that's so cool. There is family trees. I love me some family trees. Another family tree there. You can't even see it. There you go. Monarchs of House Kalor. So you can actually read about them and it says when they ruled. So that's pretty cool if you're like a history nerd, which we can say I am if I'm learning the history that I so yeah, we have Queen's Song, which I'm not sure which ones have been released, I can't remember. But yeah, there's just so many like cool stuff. I feel like this is the perfect collector's edition to add to any crazy person's <laughs> person that loves Red Queen series. Look at this map. It looks like America. It is America. Oh, she reconstructed the world, the old world, world beneath our world. Wow. This is just going to be so cool to read. I'm not sure when I'm going to get to it. Oh, a timeline of when everything happened. That's pretty cool. I was just excited. I really love Victoria Aveyard and the Red Queen series. I know not a lot of people like it, but I love it. It's <laughs> there, if you can see it. But yeah, this has three brand new short stories as well as extra scenes, maps, family trees, flags, and much more. This masterful collection offers an entirely new look into the beloved characters in the iconic Red Queen series, where no one is as they appear and the only certainty is betrayal. I'm so glad to add this to my collection, so yeah. But as I'm waiting for my laptop to charge a little bit, I think I'm just gonna chillax and yeah, I'm feeling a bit tired so I think I'm gonna go make myself a coffee and then I'm gonna finish re-watching my new video again and then export it if I'm happy with it. But yeah, it's a review finally of Marriage for One by Ella Macy and I'm really glad how it turned out. I really love the talk. Not crazy about my hair, which is this hair. It's looking a bit greasy and my top, but apart from that, great review, Natalia. So, yeah. So, guys, it is Thursday. I think it's, yeah, 7.42. I've already done yoga, but today definitely didn't go to plan. So, yeah, tomorrow is my exam, and I'm kind of freaking out. As you can see, all my papers are behind me on my bed. I only did, like, around an hour of revision today, but it was still a very good day, like, but it just didn't go to plan. And that is because yesterday night I couldn't fall asleep. So I spent like an hour editing my vlog, this vlog. And then I decided to start a new ebook. Of course I did, didn't I? And I read like 64% of it yesterday. I spent like four hours maybe reading it. And it is 
On the Way to You, that one, by Candy Steiner. Also today, Marriage for One was released, so I did get the actual ebook. As you can see, here's my e arc. Here's my ebook. I transferred my highlights that I did on my arc onto that one, so those will be live on Goodreads soon. Probably like tomorrow, I'll do it. And then I really want to reread actually Marriage for One as well because there are so many more things I need to highlight. But yeah, I'm reading On the Way to You by Candy Steiner and basically why I picked this book up because I've heard amazing things about Candy and her books they have a lot of angst to them and the only one I've read is The Wrong Game I think that's what it's called I'll have like the cover on the side and I enjoyed that one I thought it was okay so I think I gave it three stars not 3.5 I think it was three but this one what intrigued me about it is our main protagonist she's the only protagonist we don't get to follow Emery's perspective who's the love interest but Cooper is a very interesting girl and reminds me a lot of myself she is literally 20 in this book I'm turning 20 in a week so that's a plus so it is a new adult novel Emery is 23 and how they basically meet she is at work in the cafe she wants to leave the town because she feels like it is killing her so she's been slowly saving up for the past four years since she got a job in the cafe well it's kind of like a diner more than a cafe but yeah, he comes in and the first question he asks when she comes over as a waitress to him is what makes you happy? And she literally, through her mind, she's like, say your dog, your books, yoga. Literally, she is like my dream friend or me as a book character. But if it said cat instead of dog, then it would have been like perfectly me. But I love dogs too. So yeah, but I just love Cooper so flippid much she just reminds me a lot of myself and there's a aspect to her i did not expect so she represents a group of people that i feel like i've never read about before so <laughs> i'm trying to be as vague as possible so it kind of surprises you as well but yeah she has a certain disability let's just say that and it's just super interesting like reading about her journey to going on this road trip with Emery, a guy she basically doesn't know but gets to know on the trip and they're just so cute together. They're very complex characters, both of them, Cooper and Emery, but Emery deals with depression and that's all I'm gonna say and it's just really interesting seeing how he has his good days where he loves talking with Cooper and just is really happy and then the next day he can't find the strength to get out of bed just super interesting and difficult to read about I just love their chemistry and this one I'm only 64% in but this one is definitely really really good but I said the same thing about the wrong game because I loved the first half and then the second half kind of went downhill for me so hopefully that one doesn't go downhill I can't wait to see how it all wraps up it's just gonna be great but I'm not gonna read it tonight because my plan is to go take a shower and then revise hopefully for like half an hour to an hour we'll see and then go to bed I'm gonna try and go to bed before 10 because I am exhausted and this morning I woke up at 10 still have got a sore throat I thought I'd feel better but apparently not and <laughs> so yeah that's my little update for today. So guys, I am done with flipping EU law. So it's Friday and I just got back home from my exam. It's 1.30, but I ended up going and returning some clothes I bought from H&M. And I picked up one of my most anticipated releases. It's been waiting it for me at Waterstones since Tuesday. And <laughs> let me just tell you a little bit about the EU law exam. So I was supposed to answer two essay questions and a problem question. I literally blanked out on the problem question. I was so mad at myself. And then when I was walking home from the bus station, I realized I missed out a very important key case, Foster's. So I'm kind of scared. Maybe that is gonna prevent me from passing. Oh, it's just scary sometimes like when the cases you forgot to include just pop up in your brain after the exam. I just blanked out. The snot in my nose wasn't helping, but let's just open this because this at least will make me happy. Oh my god, it's stunning. I've seen already on some people's stories on Instagram how stunning the book is. And of course it's going to be stunning because it's a stunning series. So the book I got is... Oh my god. 
and it's a finale by Stephanie Garber and it's signed by the author oh my god this book like I did not think they would be more stunning but this is just amazing and it says all games must come to an end like I'm blown away how beautiful this book is it's like got red sprayed edges oh my god this book would have been perfect for transfiguration for the owls and at the back it says a love worth fighting for a dream worth dying for an ending worth waiting for oh my god I've seen some people read it but I haven't asked what they think because I'm when I go into it with my own expectations and not anyone else's oh I have only only those who preserve can find their true ending and I can't remember what other quotes you could have I can't remember which one I wanted let's see I got one of the quotes I didn't really think I wanted I'm still really happy I have it because there was two quotes that I really liked so it says can't really read it because it's very blurry but it says the most magnificent things are worth living for that's a great quote and then she refused to be afraid fear was poison to love and then the fourth one I like, can't read something hard so I'm still really happy and I'm not gonna be like exchanging it I'm not that picky but oh my god I'm so happy this is in my hands because I think today I'm gonna try and finish the book I'm currently reading that I talked about yesterday and then this weekend I might film a separate vlog just for this and then I'll be filming like I'm oh, sorry I'm hugging it I just oh my god I'm so excited but nervous because this is like one of my favourite trilogies and it's coming to an end. And I have no idea what to expect in this one. But yeah, there might be like a separate reading vlog, which is the first one I'm going to be doing. And then definitely a full review because I've done a review for every book in this series on my channel. That's just crazy. But yeah, this book is just making me so happy. <laughs> but also, when I went to <laughs> return some stuff, I went into the changing rooms and picked some stuff up. So, I, yesterday, I don't know why, I went online to type in my measurements of my body because for the longest time ever, I typed in my measurements on some website and it told me that I'm a rectangle, so like a banana. But like a rectangle they don't like they always have like thin long legs but I don't I have chubby legs so I did it again yesterday on some different website and I got spoon which is a similar shape to a pear which sounds so much more like me so it said to get shorts if you're gonna wear shorts that are loose so I finally found some flowy shorts and literally when I put them on they're so comfy got a size 10 yeah I got these I'm going to Spain with my parents or my whole family and my brother in September so these are gonna be great because one of my best friends she went to Spain she's like you don't want to wear jeans there and I don't like jean shorts anyway because they're too tight so I'm really glad I have those they're really pretty and then I got a workout top because I wanted like a kind of more tighter top for yoga even though literally I have two more days because I'm doing 13 days of yoga she has a whole like series on her channel yoga with Adrienne and yeah I've got two more days left but after I finish off the two days or I'm, depending on how I feel tomorrow I might start it tomorrow as well and finish off the 30 days then but I want to do at least seven days of intense weight loss yoga before my birthday because my birthday's next Sunday. So I got this top. I absolutely love yoga. I feel like I can walk faster now. I am just better at my poses, like tree pose. I don't wobble in tree pose, which is the thing crazy because my legs used to always like slide off or like just wobble. And then as you can see, I'm wearing this top, which I got like ages ago. This is my outfit from the exam. And I got another top, but in a different color. See, this is one of the colors that I really like wearing. So I really like these tops. So yeah, that's a haul from me. This vlog I've noticed because I'm all caught up with editing it up till now. It's quite long already. So I hope you guys enjoy a longer vlog. They might be longer now because I really like sharing like pretty much everything with you guys. So yeah, I'm gonna go make food though because my stomach nearly started rumbling in the exam. Story of my life.
So guys, it is actually already Sunday, so yesterday I missed out a day of vlogging because I basically, all I did before bed is read one chapter of One by One by Chris Carter because I was just like, I really want to read Hunting Evil, the book I picked up this month because it was released this month. I need to read An Evil Mind, I really want to read it because we'll get more backstory to that story. But yeah, yesterday pretty much all day. <laughs> I think I spent like two hours laying on my bed listening to music, like blasting music on my laptop. It was like on the highest volume and I'll tell you what albums I was listening to because that's one of the things I really enjoy doing is listening to just like full albums. So yesterday I was listening to Young Blood by Five Seconds of Summer, When My Heart Felt Volcanic by The Aces, The Original High by Adam Lambert. What else did we listen to? Voice Modes by Charlie Poof. That's like one of my favourite albums ever. I listened to some of Days Are Gone by Haim and Something To Tell You by Haim. Such a good girl band. I listened to some Made In The AM and Four One Direction songs and Shawn Mendes. My favourite album is called Shawn Mendes by Shawn Mendes. And I think that's it. That's all I listened to. But I'm going to listen to Voice Notes again because I was listening to music before filming this. But yeah, yesterday after like two hours of listening to music on my bed my mom just came in and she was like do you want to paint your room now because I've been wanting to paint my room a different color for the longest time ever if you don't know it used to be white and you can't see because I think my background still looks the same but it's not done completely but it's all painted it took us like we started around 6 30 7 and it took us like till 11 to paint so yeah so this is what it looks like. I love it. It's like <laughs> yellow everywhere. I love it. I think it adds a warmth. It reminds me like of a retro look. I don't know why, but I love it. I love how my calendar looks over there. My door, I feel like the furniture looks so much whiter. So we painted that one first. Then this one, there's like a white bit behind the bookshelf because we couldn't move at all. But I'm going to be doing a reorganisation video. I think I'm going to film it tomorrow actually or Wednesday because I really want to reorganise my bookshelves. And then my photos are going to go up. I'm going to get a frame though because I don't want to stick it on blue tag again. My window looks like that. You can't even see anything. It was fun because my mom had the roller and she was like painting and I had the brush and I was doing all the intricate work, you know. I think everything matches and the wallpaper looks super nice with the colour. So yeah, my brother when he came in he was like, oh my god it's so yellow, but I love it. Hey guys, so it's already Monday. I was supposed to wrap it up yesterday. As you can see I'm a little bit dark. I ended up putting on my self tanner yesterday and, and I look orange with that when I first put it on because it develops and then you have to take the first layer off. But I'm so happy with how reading went yesterday. A plus, it was like one of my favourite days of this month <laughs> because I read, well actually I finally started finale by stephanie garber and i started a separate reading vlog for that so that will be up soon hopefully i plan on at least reading 100 pages a day so i should be done with it around thursday time and post that around then <coughs> <coughs> as you can see still a bit ill but i got 106 pages in and i'm really loving it so good and i love that we follow both sisters which is where i wanted from this book and everything is just so interesting like i don't know what else to say but yeah if you love the caravel series or you haven't picked it up yet what are you doing with your life drop everything and go and pick up the series and read it because it's amazing. This is probably definitely going to be on my favourites of 2019. I keep forgetting what year it is. But yeah, so in total I read, I finished one book, On the Way to You by Candy Steiner, which I gave four stars to, I think, or 4.5. I think it was four stars and then and then I read one chapter of one by one I, I I can't remember if I listened to anything of kill the queen I don't think I did that was last week and then 106 pages of this but I only woke up just now I've been waking up at eight by myself which I'm proud of but I need to go and watch game of thrones episode five I'm so scared but so excited at the same time Ugh, it's a bittersweet show at the moment <coughs> but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this week's 
weekly reading vlog hope it wasn't too long if you enjoyed the long ones give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new as i post mostly bookish and lifestyle videos frequently and i'll see you in my next video bye guys